tap in with tap me. In with tap me. me. Is your mic used for spoken word, music, comedy, or podcasts? Why don't you take a seat on my couch and share your craft? Focus on the future. Reminisce about the past. This segment pinpoints your journey to the top. So make your presence felt before the mic drops. This is the Mic Drop with B. Anderson, and today we are sitting down with a special guest, and I am so excited to have her on the segment, and uh, I would love for you to introduce yourself. Oh my God, I'm super excited. My name is Gifted, and for those who don't know, my introduction is I am gifted by the one that allows me to form the words in my head that trickle down my tongue past your ears and on to this screen, gifted from the one above. Thank you. I love it. So with you being gifted, <laughs> I know last time we sat down, I asked you how you got that name. So this time I wanna start things off by asking you, what initially made you want to be a writer? Oh, wow. Um, I had a story to tell. I had a story to tell um, so many things that I experienced throughout my childhood on and that spilled over into my teenage years and my adult years, um, and I survived, mm -hmm. you know, I survived sexual abuse. I survived being the child, a uh, latchkey child, <laughs> um, of a mom that worked two and three jobs. I survived the loss, the loss of my mother. And father and so my survival my struggles became my testimony and I felt like it was the gift that God had given me to share that with others and help others know that it's okay we can survive we can pull ourselves out of those holes we can heal and we can become hope so I start writing so do you um, would you say that ripples would be a adequate description of some of the things that you experienced as a child into your teenage and adult years? Absolutely. Um, you're spot on as always. Um, yes, Ripples is absolutely the journey um, of me, of my story, of some of the struggles and things that I've gone through um, and overcome and overcome. So I, that's important to say some of the things that I've overcome. Um, so. Yes, that, that is accurate. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about Ripples a little later. Okay. But first, we're going to get into your first two books that are sitting up front here. Mm -hmm. And I would like to know, what made you choose National Poetry Month, which just passed, by the way? Uh, what made you choose the poetry prompts? as the source of your first two books. Okay. Um, so the, the first book, which is My 30, mm -hmm. um, clever name from the 30 poem from the 30 days, mm -hmm. um, just became kind of like a challenge to myself. Mm -hmm. um, the My 30s collection became, and especially the first one became, let me see if I can do this. Let me see if I can take the collection of poems, the labor of loves that I've given um, on Facebook and make those a reality, make those a book. Um, you know, can I, is my work sustainable to put out into the atmosphere as a book? Mm -hmm. And um, so I began working on them. I had the poems. So that part, you know, was easy because I had written the poems every day, you know, for the challenge. So that part was easy. Um, the hurdles came when, you know, putting them out there, getting the fonts right, and being able to upload them and make them a, a, a 
a product, a book. Um, and I used Amazon, uh, which was really helpful to me because it, it kind of, even though it, 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 it'll say, nope, you got to redo this, you got to redo this, it was still very user friendly for me, a person who's not that tech savvy um, mm -hmm. and um, a person who wanted to, didn't have the funds to uh, maybe go with a publisher, um, but wanted my works out there. So it allowed um, me to have that opportunity um, by doing it myself. And it took some time um, and, you know, just learning the different fonts, the size of the book and what's, you know, what's the best choices for my product, um, a cover, finding a cover for my book. Mm -hmm. But um, it allowed me to do it. And it was great. And with the 3030 um, Poetry Group, you said that you wrote every day. Mm -hmm. What challenges, because sometimes I know um, Kim, which is Duop, yes. you know, has said like, hey, if you want to go back and write two or three in a day, you know, what was the challenge of trying to write every day? Um, first, I wanted to make sure that I was always exercising my pen, using my pen, my brain, my words. Um, and so keeping up because i I've, I've tried i had tried years previous um i don't know exactly when the 30 30 challenge started mm -hmm. but i know my one of my first times was 2017 mm -hmm. and i maybe wrote three or four poems uh, -huh. uh then 2018 um you know maybe six so i told myself 2019 okay we're gonna do this we're gonna be serious when soon as that prompt comes up get a notification I have to start writing. I have to start curating what I want to say and uh, get it posted. So I challenged myself to do that. No matter the hour, I'm a night owl uh, anyway. And so I made sure that I, I posted every day um, and didn't miss a day. And when I met that challenge, then I knew, okay, this is some good stuff. <laughs> so as you, as you said, you wrote the first one in 2019. Mm -hmm. What was... What do you think was the difference between writing a book before the pandemic versus during the pandemic? Oh, the biggest thing was time. Mm -hmm. Time. I had more time in 2020 and 2021 mm -hmm. um, to write. Now, saying that in 2019, I think I did better writing because I, I had structure. I had work. Uh -huh. I had lunchtime to write mm -hmm. and evening to write. You yeah. know, it was more structured. Whereas in 2020 and 2021, yeah, it was more lax and daisy and uh, I got time to write it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, time would be that, that, that main factor, just how I was using my time um, to create, you know, the stories and poetry that yeah. I would tell. So time would be the biggest factor, but um, probably had more to write about in 2020. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Cause I'm always writing about anything, life, life, Something I see, something that happened to me. So I don't know if that's, I guess more happened in 2020. I was feeling more. <laughs> well, I would tell you from what I've seen in the difference of the two books was that the illustration mm. and, and the Unmasked book, the second one, yes. was so dynamic. I mean, oh, it, it literally gave a whole new perspective to things because if people have never read your book, uh, your books, they wouldn't know that you illustrate some of the poems. You have images mm -hmm. in there. And, um, you know, I remember and I was, I was uh, looking through um, the books and I seen one of the prompts was um, writing about something that may be ugly that's also beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then you had a sonogram picture in there and yeah. and so you know and then it was um mm -hmm. i think right about the last text that you received at 7 a.m and then you had uh, a bit canceled so what was the challenge of um illustrating while um also writing poetry on these prompts wow um that is a great question thank you for that and thank you for your um your review of the difference in the book. This this is probably the first time I've heard that. So ah. thank you. That means a lot to me to have that growth mm -hmm. and for someone to see it. So wow, thank you. Absolutely. Um, the illustrations. 
what has always um, scared me was ensuring that it was okay to use a picture or photo or artwork uh, with, uh, without permission. Mm -hmm. um, and without exposing myself to any copyright infringement of someone else's work. Mm -hmm. So the best way for me to do that was to capture my own um, images. Gotcha. And to create my own images. And even with the one that P. Diddy, P. Diddy is in, mm -hmm. that is actually a photo of him on my TV. So <laughs> I'm hoping that's okay. <laughs> he was on my TV in my living room. Right. I took a snapshot. Because I kept, I had images that I used on Facebook, mm -hmm. and obviously they were from his page or something I saw on Google. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was afraid, you know, you got, you have to protect your your works and yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I was like, nah, I'm gonna have to pull that. So that that held up the book for a minute because mm -hmm. you know you want to make sure that your work is protected and and you are protected from any legal ramifications. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, in order to do that, I just I was like, I'm gonna wait till I see him or somehow get a picture. And I had emailed him to use his image, but I'd never got a response. So I just, you know, to cover all bases, I'm gonna take a picture of him. So he was on TV and I took a picture. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, and then a lot of them of, of, of images around me or pictures that I've taken mm -hmm. um, of my daughter of outside nature. I love nature and photos and, and pictures and pictures of the moon. Um, so they're my images so thank you for that you have definitely uh done some great work uh why don't you let everyone know how they can get their hands on these first two books oh yes all right so um these books are both available on amazon.com under the name gifted johnson wilkinson that is my whole pen name um i go by gifted as the artist um, but my full uh, pen name for my work is gifted johnson Wilkinson and that is on Amazon um, and you can find me on IG I'm mainly on IG but I did start a new Facebook page um, under the name gifted so yeah. yay, we're back on Facebook yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know you have some I issues know some with issues yeah. yes so we are back on Facebook as gifted and I'm trying to make sure that I stay within the brand gifted um, mm -hmm. and so everything mostly is on gifted but you also on um, Instagram, if you go to my link tree, which is in my bio, you'll be able to find everything. My books, my website, all of my um, contact information on social, social media. So please look me up. Even if you can't purchase a book at this time, just tell me, you know, how you, you like the, the cover or ask me a question. I'm always um, available to help someone else. So uh, that's, that's what we do. That's why we do this, I think, you know? I love it. Why don't you talk about some of the things you encountered while writing? Because when you put a book out, uh, the general public only sees the finished product, mm -hmm. but only a fellow author can understand what goes on behind the scenes of writing a book. Like, what are some of the struggles that you encounter and what helped you make the decision between self-publishing versus um, seeking a publisher because there are some pros and cons to both. Okay. I'll answer that one first. The, okay. what, uh, um, what were the hurdles um, for the publisher? Mm -hmm. um, I, I didn't find a publisher that I was comfortable enough with to pay money mm -hmm. to help me publish a book mm -hmm. when I can publish it myself. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. Um, finance, you know, just having the monies available, that extra income mm -hmm. um, coming in to be able to afford to do that as well. Um, I have since, for my Ripple's book, and we'll talk about that, um, found someone that I'm very comfortable with, a family, actually, okay. um, that I am more than comfortable with. And actually, just, I can't even imagine doing this on my own now. Mm -hmm. uh, because the wealth of knowledge that's been shared, um, just the trust that has been built between this group has been amazing. Okay. Um, so um, the difference, you know, is now I know finances, number one, money, mm -hmm. money, having that um, expendable income. And, um, and then just having a team gotcha. that will help you. Um, these books, um, they were easy to do because I had the poems. 
you know, could I have used that feedback and, you know, extra editing eyes? Probably. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's okay if y'all gonna tell me that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Um, Cause I'm growing. Each book, I'm growing. Absolutely. Um, some of the challenges with these books, biggest challenge for me are margins. <laughs> Getting the margins right, yeah. the fonts. Yeah. Uh, making sure, when I say that, they, you have to have the margins um, meet the specifications yes. of the of the K KPD um, yeah uh, KDP KDP, yeah. KDP yeah. publication uh -huh. um, so you can't just nilly willy put your pawns up and upload them you actually have to meet their specifications yes. in order for them to publish the book so that was one of the biggest hurdles for me yes. having to every time I upload it I'm like I got it yeah. and they come back like this wrong yes. this wrong but at least they tell you like page yes. 17 is wrong instead of having you put it out guess there it right and they give you the preview too to go through right. and look at exactly. it exactly so, yes. so I appreciate that and mm -hmm. uh, but that was one of the biggest struggles for me um finding a cover this second one finding a cover that I knew because I want to make these it's going to be a trilogy I did 19 20 and 21 21 is coming that's okay. a whole nother but I wanted my baby out but anyway yeah, yeah, yeah. 21 is coming so I did 19 20 and 21 and I wanted them to be a trilogy okay uh, uh, a series that okay. I'll link together um, so finding a cover for the 2020 edition that was similar um, to the first book mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a bit challenging okay um but um we made it through and i think they they mesh very well <laughs> so um, and, um so that was a bit of a challenge but all challenges um, can be met and, mm -hmm. and you can climb above them and you can get through them um, and i did and and i you know i applaud someone who's having challenges publishing or whatever it is just keep pushing yes keep pushing the writing is always the easy part of everything. It's everything else that goes into it. Yep, so I it definitely is. understand that. So true. What advice would you give to an aspiring author, someone who is trying to get started, but don't really have a sense of direction? If someone mm -hmm. came to you like that, what advice would you give them? I would ask questions first. What are you trying to do and why? Mm -hmm. Okay. What are you trying to do? Because they need you, a person needs to know those answers for mm -hmm. themselves not only for us for themselves why am i doing this because only then if you know your why does it become important gotcha. um, so know your why and what you're trying to do what is your end goal so with those i knew it was 30 poems um, that had been posted in the 30 30 challenge mm -hmm. um Ripples is a little bit different, and I'll bring it in. Let's get into uh, Ripples. <laughs> ripples is a little bit different, so this may be... Um, you hold it up a little higher. This may be uh, probably what someone would say, oh, God, what do I put in? What Because you know, like with my 30, um, I knew what I was putting in. Mm -hmm. I knew I was putting in 30 poems from the 30. Mm -hmm. With Ripples... I have been the typical Arthur, putting stuff in, taking it out, putting stuff in, no, they don't say what I wanted to say. Because I want to make sure that I'm delivering something that people can relate to and understand. Hopefully not totally relate to, but relate to sorrow yes. or relate to pain, but know that there's hope. And how do I say that in a book? You know? So um, I'll put something in, like, bad seed for example and then which and bad seed talks about my abuse pretty heavily it's one of the most popular poems that i've done and and that's another thing do i put a poem in here that i've already done in public mm -hmm. you know um but bad seed is one of those that talks about the abuse um do i put that in here so i had it in then i took it out mm -hmm. you know people want new stuff new, and, and so i go back and forth so that's one of the challenging things so i would tell people know your why why are you doing it to help myself heal and help others heal and then know your end result to tell us a journey a journey of loss sexual abuse pain and hope and love so those are my what's and why so i would tell people to know your what and why with ripples and it being your third book your third project it takes on an entirely different sound mm -hmm. uh, than the first two books, obviously. Yes, sir. What allowed you to be so vulnerable 
to where you are talking about sexual abuse. You are talking about happiness and hope and love and loss. What, what allowed you to um, be vulnerable enough to go that route? You come in today, right? <laughs> <laughs> he has the questions, y'all. Um, I have felt for years, God gave me this gift for a reason. Mm. And it is my duty and responsibility to tell the story. Tell the story. Um, share the story not only for me, but for others. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, when I talk about bad seed, that was one of the pieces that I first uh, revealed uh, this abuse. And I had people come up to me requesting that mm -hmm. because they wanted to understand that healing and why those things happen and and see the hope and so I, I've known for a long time that this was part of my purpose to share the story tell the story otherwise you know things that happen to us one we may never heal from them and two someone else may need that healing that story and it's up to us it's like the story in the Bible where you know the, they had gifts and one buried their gifts if we're not using our God-given talent, that, that's pretty much the same thing. We're burying our gifts. Um, so this is my way of not burying my gifts. This is my way of sharing my testimony, which is what God wants us to do so that his light shines through us. I've always felt like we go through things so that we can help others. Mm -hmm. We don't go through things just for us. It's Absolutely. always to help the next person, whether it be our kids, the next mm -hmm. generation, someone we may see who reminds us of us. Mm -hmm. So just the fact that you wrote this book to help someone else, I think is right in line with that. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. When is Ripples going to be released? <laughs> oh, God. That's a place of contention for me. Um, <laughs> I wish I could tell you. I honestly, and this is just going to be full transparency, mm -hmm. transparency right here. I wish I could say, I wish I could say the exact date when Ripples will be out. Mm -hmm. um, but life, I will say that. Um, my original date was April 2020. Yeah. And here we are, May 1st. Mm -hmm. And I'm still walking around with this. <laughs> Um, I would say so. Okay. I would say so. Because, you know, um, we can get down and disappointed with ourselves and we can allow that to get in the way. And I have sometimes. Um, that uh, disappointment in myself. I be We beat ourselves up. Yes. We beat ourselves up more than anyone in this world. Mm -hmm. um, and trust me, we get a lot from the world. But then we take that on and beat ourselves up. And I could do that, and I have, um, but I'm not going to allow it to stop me, stop the purpose. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll say soon. Ripples will be out soon, as soon as possible. You know, and it's interesting to me because we've spoken about this on so many occasions that when I see you, it's like you appear to have just everything together. Like, you know, you are always on point. So to see the transparency, to see how, you know, just this project ripples, just how it affects you and mm -hmm. how it's an emer emotional journey, yes. you know, that you are ready to share with this world. Um, I love it. You know, <laughs> I, I love just just seeing this this side of you and then you know and i always consider you to be like my sister anyway so to be able to <laughs> you know see this side of you i i love it and you know mm -hmm. i know that this is going to be an amazing project and what was it like i mean because you wrote ripples ar around the same time that you were writing unmasked <laughs> was it a difficulty writing two books that are you know two completely different avenues you know was it tough you know doing two projects at the same time um my 30 was a, a a relief it was it allowed me to take a breath 
-hmm. It's just, you know, because some of ripples is heavy. Um, it, it's a lot of emotion packed in, in ripples. Mm -hmm. um, and when I'm writing or even rewriting or editing those poems, I feel that um, and I take that on. And then Ripples allows me to just be free and write about, you know, my feet splashing through the water mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever the prompt may be. It allows me to write something fun and, and not so heavy. So it was kind of, re it was a release. <laughs> okay. And, and relief, actually, relief to break away from Ripples for a moment. Because um, there are some heavy pieces um, that I've shared, that I will share. Mm -hmm. in here and so writing them you know became that trauma all over again mm -hmm. um, but it needs to get out it needs it needs to be told shared and released for me so what's going on on May 28th Woo -hoo! <laughs> so you know timing and life whatever so May 28th let's answer that first uh -huh. is ripples live yeah. ripples live so um, this was a live event. I've, I've, had, I've had ripples and just the whole thing in my head for years. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, Ripples Live was supposed to happen three years ago. Mm -hmm. Two years, two, 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 two. <laughs> oh, sorry. And it didn't. And so I told myself this year, I'm not going to let anything stop me. I almost did because the book isn't out, but it will we'll have pre-orders and pre-sales during that night. Mm -hmm. um, but it's actually a live version and not the whole book. Trust me, that, you'll be there all night. <laughs> um, so it's a live version of Ripples. I will take um, pieces from the book and um, recite them and act them out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and okay. I don't know if act is a good, uh, you know, but they will be, it's kind of, it's going to be a live production of Ripples. Okay. And it, but it won't only be me. Um, I, I don't like to do anything just for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I also will be sharing the stage um, with three of our youths from the community. Mm. Um, and then also some lovely um, artists and musicians um, just to capture the essence of, uh, of Ripples. So everything will be about Ripples. Even the, the youth that are participating are writing poems about Ripples, the Ripples in their life. Okay. Um, and so it's just, it's still going to be a fun night. Um, we were hoping to have the book in hand and we'll see. <laughs> um, but even if we don't, um, my publisher is saying that we can still take um, pre sale orders. So, Ooh. yeah. Yeah, I need to know about that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, all right. But May 28th, we will be at Artsville in Madisonville, which is a wonderful place. Yes. Um, it's not where I got started in poetry, but it was my first time. Um, being on a stage and being so um, vulnerable, mm. it's it's where I shared Bad Seed um, during a play, uh, a spoken word stage play called Coochie Chronicles. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of a full circle for me. Yeah, um, a full circle moment going back to that place that allowed me to begin to heal. I love so. it. So, would you like to give us a sneak peek at Ripples by giving us a piece? Mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I love Any, it. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's see what we have here. I don't want to do anything too heavy. Mm -hmm. um, but, yes. All righty. Oh, see. Uh, all right. We'll do this one. <laughs> all right. Sensations of my mind and sometimes hard to find. Dreams. A series of thoughts and images that float in my mind a cherish ambition I hope to one day find. Dreams. Trapped by the realities that bar clear understanding of my being. Suffocation of my intellect keeps my prisoner held tight on the possibilities of freedom. But I write them down, record the deeds to remind myself to simply breathe. Dreams, allow the hope 
of what could be so I don't drift too far into that darkness, so I don't drift too far into that prison of light, so that I don't suffocate away. And no, there is where I'll stay and be, straining my eyes and peering at the glance of once was a peephole of gloom. So I dream, I dream, whom the sun sets free is free, whom the sun sets free is free. So I dream, I dream big. I dream big images, ideas, desires that float in my head. I dream big. Some I've even caught my dreams. While others I'm still imagining, creating, and living. Darkness can't survive in this small place where I dare to have a little bit of light and where I dare to dream. For it just might come true. So I keep dreaming. I love it. I think my favorite aspect of your poetry is has always been the delivery. Um, is no matter what your, what subject matter you're talking about, it's always the delivery that makes me feel, you know, your words. Mm, thank you. What thank inspired you. that piece? There are days when I really feel like I, I can't go on. Mm -hmm. um, there are days that are dark for me, mm -hmm. um, that are still painful for me, like the death of my mother, mm -hmm. her birthday, um, the loss of not having people in my life. There are days when I just feel like I'm caving. But then there's days when that small ray of light allows me to get up, mm -hmm. to hope, and have dreams. Um, and know that I can, they can come true. But that's what that piece is about. I love it. I love it. This is the part of the show where I'm going to ask gifted a couple of miscellaneous questions. So the first question I would like to ask you is, you know, because we know that you're a dope writer, you're an author, you're a singer, you, you know, you do all of these different, you wear a lot of hats. What is a hidden talent that not many people know about? <laughs> <laughs> do I have to do it? I can't do you it. You don't have to do it. You could just say it. Okay. I can clap my feet. Really? <laughs> like a <butt> <laughs> <laughs> That is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm telling out of all of the things that I was thinking of that you could say, I would not have guessed that. <laughs> yep, I can go, I go like that. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Um, with all of the successes that you've had, what is something that you have not yet done, but you've always had a dream or desire to do? Mm. Mm. So my biggest hope and, and uh, dream was to be on the stage with Maya Angelou. Mm. Um, I waited too long. That's why we shouldn't wait. Mm -hmm. We gotta live our dreams out loud mm -hmm. and even try to do them. Um, so now, wow, I, I dream about this right here being my full-time job. Like, mm -hmm. this is my job, speaking, writing, mm -hmm. um, and sharing my gifts with the world, um, not just to get paid, but to be able to sustain mm -hmm. um, the, the travels and all of that um, throughout. So that, that's my dream. So where will people see you next? Um, 
You can always find me on Instagram, IG. Mm -hmm. um, I have a live show every Monday that's under the Ain't Right Tribes page mm -hmm. um, called Mental Mondays. And Mental Mondays is just releasing whatever it is. It could be happy. You know, a lot of people think, oh, I don't have a mental illness piece. It doesn't have to be mental illness because everything is mental. Let's be real. Mm -hmm. um, so I do that. I'm on Instagram, and that's at 1 p.m. every Monday. Um, but for live performance, May 28th will be it. May 28th. Okay. Yeah. But look for me on Instagram and Facebook, the flyer. Share it. Um, Absolutely. And then, most importantly, come. And be a part of the show. Be a part of the experience. What is your website info? It is www.giftedpoetry.com. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. I think this might be the perfect opportunity to tell them what you and I have cooking for next year. So the season two premiere of the mic drop with B. Anderson will actually have us trading places to where I'll be on the couch mm -hmm. and she'll be in a chair and she will actually get the opportunity to interview me and Super it'll be in front of a live audience so that's that's going to be really exciting uh, more details to come it will be next year in mm -hmm. February so that is how we will open season two but I figure since we have her here now, I might as well break the news. Ooh, so I'm um, super excited. Gonna be a really cool experience. I'm really excited about it and I'm thankful that you agreed honored. to do it. Very honored. I'm excited and honored to to be a part of that journey with you. So I can't wait. Thank you. Yeah, she gonna ask me the tough questions, y'all. You can best <laughs> believe that. I can't wait. Ask him what's his unhid talent. <laughs> that went through. <laughs> oh goodness, yeah, I gotta think about that. Um, <laughs> um, so thank you for sitting down with me. Yeah, I'm so happy always. that this is our second interview this year. Yeah. So um, you know, this has been excellent. I am very excited about what's to come. And as always, this has been the mic drop with B. Anderson, and we out. We out. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and comment on it, and subscribe to my channel for more exclusive content like this.